إنك لمن المرسلين على صراط مستقيم تنزيل العظيم الرحيم لتنذر قوما ما أنذر آباء وهم فهم غافلون لقد أهق القول ولا فطرهم فهم لا يؤمنون إنا جعلنا في عناكهم وغلالا فهي إلى الأفقان فهم مقمهون وجعلنا من بين أيديهم سدا ومن خلفهم سدا فأغشيناهم فهم لا يبصرون وسواء عليهم أأنظرتهم أم لم تنذرهم لا يؤمنون إنما تنذروا من اتبع الذكر وخشي الرحمن بالغيب فبشره بمغفرة واجر كريم إنا نحن نهي الموتى ونكتب ما قدموا وآثارهم وكل شيء أعصيناه في إمام مبين وضرب لهم مثلا أصحاب القضية إذا جاء المرسلون إذا أرسلنا إليهم اثنين فكذبوهما فأززنا بثالث فقالوا إنا إليكم مرسلون قالوا ما أنتم إلا بشر مثلنا وما أنزل الرحمن من شيء إن أنتم إلا تكذبون قالوا ربنا يعلم إنا إليكم لمرسلون وما علينا إلا البلاء المبين قالوا إنا تطيرنا بكم لئن لم تنتهوا لنرجمنكم وليغسنكم منا أباب عليم قالوا طائركم معكم أئن ذكرتم فلا أنتم قوم مصرفون وجاء من أقصى المدينة وجن يسعى قال يا قوم اتبعوا المرسلين اتبعوا من لا يسالكم أجر وهم محتدون وما لي لا أعبد الذي فطرني وإليه ترجعون أتخذوا من دونه آلهة أن يردن الرحمن بذر لا بذر لا تغن عني شفاعتهم شيئا ولا ينقذون إني إذا لفي ظلال مبين إني آمنت بربكم فاسمعون قيل ادخل الجنة قال يا ليت قومي يعلمون بما غفر لي ربي وجعلني من المقرمين وما أنزلنا على قومه من بعده من جن من السماء وما كنا منزلين إن كانت إلا صيحة واحدة فإذا هم خامدون يا عصرة على العباد ما يعتيهم من رسول إلا كانوا به يستحذهون ألم يروا كم أحلكنا قبلهم من القرون أنهم إليهم لا يرجعون وإن كل لما جميع لدينا مهغرون وآيت لهم العرض الميتة أهيناها وأخرجنا منها هبا فمنه يأكلون وجعلنا فيها جنات من نخيل وعناب وفجرنا فيها من الأيون ليأكلوا من ثمره وما أملت كويديهم أفلا يشكرون سبحان الذي خلق الأزواج كلها مما تمت الأرض ومن أنفسهم ومما لا يعلمون وآية لهم النص وآية لهم الليل نسلخ منه النهار فإغاهم مظلمون والشمس تجري لمستقر لها ذلك تقدير العزيز العليم والقمر قدرناه منازل حتى عاد كالرجون القديم 
للشمس ينبغي لها أن تدرق القمر ولا الليل سابق النهار وكل في فلك يسبهون وآية لهم أنا حملنا ذريتهم في الفلك المشون وخلقنا لهم من مثله ما يرقبون وإن نشأ نغرقهم فلا سريق لهم ولا هم ينقذون إلا رحمة منا ومتاع الإلهين وإذا قيل لهم انتقوا ما بين أيديكم وما خلفكم لعلكم ترهمون وما تعديهم من آية من آيات ربهم إلا كانوا أنها معرضين وإذا قيل لهم أنفقوا مما رزقكم الله قال الذين كفوا للذين آمنوا أن نطعم من لا يشاء الله مطعما إن أنتم إلا في ظلال مبين ويقولون متى هذا الوعد إن كنتم صادقين ما ينظرون إلا صيحة واحدة الفيضاء تأخذهم وهم يخسمون فلا يستطيعون توصية ولا إلى أهلهم يرجعون ونفق في السور فإذاهم من الأجداد إلى ربهم ينسلون قالوا يا ويلنا من بعثنا من مرقدنا هذا ما وعد الرحمن وصدق المرسلون إن كانت إلا صيحة واحدة فإذاهم جميع لدينا مهضرون فاليوم لا تظلم نفس شيئا ولا تجدون إلا ما كنتم تعملون إن أصحاب الجنة اليوم في شغل فاكهون ثم أزواجهم في ذلال على الأرائك متفعون لهم فيها فاكهة ولهم ما يدعون سلام قولا من رب الرحيم ممتاز اليوم أيها المجرمون ألم أعهد إليكم يا بني آدم أن لا تعبدوا الشيطان إنه لكم عدو مبين وأن اعبدوني هذا صراط مستقيم ولقد أضل منكم جبلا كثيرا أفلم تكونوا تعقلون هذه جهنم التي كنتم توعدون إصلاح اليوم بما كنتم تكفرون اليوم نختم على أفواههم وتكلمنا أيديهم وتشهدوا أرجلهم بما كانوا يكسبون ولو نشاء لتمسنا على أعينهم فاستبقوا الصراط فأنا يكسرون ولو نشاء ولمسخناهم على مكانتهم فما استطاعوا مضيا ولا يرجئون ومن نؤمره ننكس في الخلق أفلا يعقلون وما علمناه الشعر وما ينبغي له إن هو إلا ذكر وقرآن مبين لينذر من كان أي ويهك القول على القافرين أولم يروا أنا خلقنا لهم مما عملت أيدينا أنا من فهم لها مالكون وذللناها لهم فمنها وقوبهم ومنها يأكلون ولهم فيها منافع ومشارب فلا يشكرون واتخذوا من دون الله آلهة لعلهم ينصرون لا يستطيعون نصرهم وهم لهم جند مخضرون فلا يهزم قولهم إنا نعلم ما يسرون وما يعلنون أولم يرى الإنسان أنا خلقناه من نطفة فإذا هو قسيم مبين نضرب لنا مثلا ونسي خلقا قال من يهي الإغام وهي رمين قل يهي الذي أنشعها أول مرة وهو بكل خلق عليم الذي جعل لكم من الشجر الأخضر نارا فإذا أنتم منه توقدون أوليس الذي خلق السماوات والأرض بقادر على أن يخلق مثلهم بلى وهو الخلاق العليم إنما أمره إذا أراد شيئا أن يقول له كن فيكون فسبحان الذي بيده ملكوت كل شيء وإليه ترجعون صدق الله العلي العظيم
Surya Yaseen was for the Esra Sawab of Marhum uh, Muhammad Ali Bai Qara, Al Fatiha. Muhammad Wali Muhammad Salawat. Jab piyo paani Hussain ibn Ali ka naam lo Jab piyo paani Hussain ibn Ali ka naam lo Jab piyo paani Hussain ibn Oh, no, 
I've not done today's introduction, so I'll do it now, and the announcement, then we'll move towards the majlis. So to my brothers and sisters, assalamu alaikum. The Holy Prophet said, a servant of Allah entered paradise because of a thorn branch that he removed from the path of a fellow Muslim. This hadith is from al khisal version 32, page 111. Today is Sunday, 6th of September, 21st of Izzal Hajj, 439 Hijrah. We are commemorating the shahada of sons of Hazrat Muslim alayhi salam. Um, announcements for our upcoming program. On Thursday, 6th of September, we have either Mubaila, which will begin sharp at 8 p.m. And on Friday, the Friday prayers will begin, inshallah, at 1.06 p.m. May I request everyone to move closer, and we'll begin today's majlis. For Muhammad wa Muhammad, salawat. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان اللعين الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين بارئ الخلائق أجمعين والحمد لله الذي بعد فلا يرى وقرب فشهد النجوى تبارك وتعالى والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين حبيب قلوبنا وطبيب نفوسنا وشفيع ذنوبنا أبو القاسم محمد وعلى أهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين الذين أذهب الله عنهم الرجس وطهرهم تطهيرا واللعنة الدائمة الباقي على أعدائهم ومبغذيهم وغاصب حقوقهم ومنكر فضائلهم من أول يوم ظلمهم إلى لقاء يوم الدين أما بعد سلام عليكم جميعا ورحمة الله وبركاته 
We are gathered here today to remember the sons of Hazrat Muslim ibn Aqil salawatullahi wa salamuhu alayhi. The two sons who were imprisoned and were martyred one year after the event of Karbala. And this, their crime was that they were the children of Banu Hashim and attached to Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salatu wasalam. While we commemorate the wafat and the shahadat of these two children who were brutally killed and beheaded, we learn lessons in our lives that have been taught to us through Quran and the Holy Prophet by using the opportunity of this gathering. One of the most beautiful things that Islam introduced within the pagan era and the message that the Holy Prophet of Islam brought before the people that attracted the people towards the Holy Prophet of Islam was his idea of emancipating and giving independence to people and freeing them. The idea of slavery or being in the state of bondmanship is the idea that was abhorred by the Holy Prophet. And therefore, you will see that in Islam, the Holy Prophet of Islam's message attracted thousands and thousands of people of that particular time and after that hundreds of thousands of them to make 1.7 billion Muslims. Of the Muslims today, there are those who just follow because their fathers or their mothers or their ajdad and parents and grandparents and their ancestors were Muslims and therefore they are Muslims. But for those people who were totally immersed in the pagan era time, for them to see light, for them to think, for them to ponder, for them to make a choice was not something simple. However, they heard the Prophet. So you wonder what was it that attracted these people towards the Prophet? You will see that the ideology, particularly the ideology of giving freedom and liberating people from the bondmanship of that particular time. You can be a slave of ideology, you can be a slave of your material needs, you can be stay a slave of materialism, you can be a slave of various things, including a slave of your desire. And as long as you are a slave, there is no hope for you to be liberated. The moment you acknowledge and accept that I am a slave of my materialistic desires, or I am a slave of any particular ideology, or I am a slave of any oppression or tyrannical rule, until there is an acknowledgement of that thing, freedom and liberation does not come. So what attracted the people towards the Prophet was the fact that he was offering them this independence, this liberty, this liberation for themselves, and his ability to emancipate people from that which was shackling them. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about this in Quran in various places. For example, Surah Al-Dahr or Surah Al-Insan. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Insan, He says, Inna khalaqna al-insana min nutfatin amshajin nabtali. We created man from a drop of sperm which was intermingled. Allah says, Inna khalaqna al-insana min nutfatin amshaj. And the purpose of our creation was nabtali, so that we may try this man. So now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that he created a man from an intermingled, from the sperm that was intermingled. And the idea and the reason of this creation that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says was that nabtali, we shall put him to trial. We shall put him to test. Because we shall put him to test, we cannot just put him to test. We need to give him certain tools for him to be able to enter the test. فَجَعَلْنَاهُ سَمِيعًا 
Basira. So that we gave him the ability to see, we gave him the ability to hear, we made him a being endowed with hearing and sight. Then the next verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and then after, so Sami' and Basir here is referring to the ability of man to see, the ability of man to hear whatever he is hearing. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inna hadaynahu sabil. Not only did we create him from a sperm that was intermingled, not only did we grant him the tools of vision and the tools of being able to see and the tools of being able to hear and his intellect, whatever was granted to him. On top of that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, we wired within him and we guided him. Inna hadaynahu sabil. We showed him internally, innately within him, the right path. Inna hadayna sabil. Now, imma shakiran wa imma kafura. Either he is grateful for that that we have given to him, or this man is ungrateful, it is entirely up to him. The fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, imma shakiran wa imma kafura means that he has given freedom to man to either be grateful or be ungrateful. So this idea of man's innate nature being something that is seeking and is in pursuit of freedom and liberty, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala confirms this in Quran. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in another verse of Quran says, as far as man is concerned, as far as this human being is concerned, who has been given the knowledge of the good and the bad, فَأَلْهَمَهَا فُجُورَهَا وَتَقْوَاهَا We have inspired into man that which is good and that which is bad. So that is all innately wired inside the man in, as a nature of his, as an innate nature of his. And it is within a human being to know what is good and what is bad. Stealing is not a good thing. Man does not need to be told stealing is not a good, need, good thing. Or for example, lying is not something good. Man does not need to be told that lying is not a good thing. Within the nature of man, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَأَلْهَمَهَا فُجُورَهَا وَتَقْوَاهَا We have inspired in him that which is good and that which is bad. And a man knows this, Allah says, بَلِ الْإِنسَانُ عَلَى نَفْسِهِ بَصِيرَةً Indeed, man is evidence against himself. وَلَوْ أَلْقَى مَعَذِيرًا Even though he gives excuses all the time. He is aware innately of what he is. He knows what is good, what is bad. He is aware. Then he is an evidence against himself, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. بَلِ الْإِنسَانُ عَلَى نَفْسِهِ بَصِيرًا He knows his nafs. He knows that he is an evidence against himself. وَلَوْ أَلْقَى مَعَذِيرًا Although this man puts forth his excuses all the time. So you will see that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created man as a free human being. He has created man to be able to free himself to soar to the beloved, to be able to inquire, to be able to explore, to be able to see, to be able to question, to be able to interrogate, to be able, whatever he desires, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has granted him freedom to do so. Then we have another verse of the Quran. Where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about man who will be going to paradise, who will be going to hell. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Waqifuhum, you must stop these people before they reach their destination. Waqifuhum, innahum mas'ulun. Indeed, these people shall be questioned. There must be questioned for what they do. The idea of being questioned. If we were robots, there was no question. There was no need to be questioned. If we were all created as robots, we came to this world working as robots. We, le we went left because we were supposed to go left. We went right because we were supposed to go right. Then there would not need to be a qiyamat. There would no need to be a questioning of anything. 
The fact that man is going to be questioned on the day of Qiyamah means that he had a choice of doing what he did. And therefore, the choice that he's, he has made, he must be responsible to respond to whatever the question that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala puts before him. And then another verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَكُلَّ إِنسَانٍ أَلْزَمْنَاهُ طَائِرَهُ فِي عُنُقِهِ and we have made every man's action, every action of a man cling to his neck, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. We have made every action of a man cling to his neck. وَنُخْرِجُ لَهُ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ كِتَابًا يَلْقَاهُ مَنْشُورًا And we will bring forth to him on the day of Qiyamah a book which, he, which will be wide open before him of the actions that he has committed out of his own free will that Allah has given. And he will be told, Iqra kitabak, read this book of yours. Kafa bi nafsika al-yawma alayka hasiba. Indeed, it is sufficient as a reckoner, this book, against you on this day of Qiyamah. So what was beautiful about what Islam taught us was that it brought the idea of removing us or removing human beings from the shackles of slavery and bondmen, bondsmanship so that we become liberated and free so that we can engage with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a manner that we are comfortable to ask questions to Allah and to be able to receive answers through inspiration through books through scholars, through Quran, through a hadith of the Holy Prophet of Islam, and be able to feel and express my freedom before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It was this that Allah says regarding the Holy Prophet of Islam. He says, Those who follow the Rasul, the Prophet, the Messenger, and Nabi who is a Prophet, Al Ummi who is from amongst the people of Makkah. A man who's mentioned, the Prophet whose mention has been mentioned in Torah and in Injil. This man had a particular task, Allah says. It was the most beautiful task that we gave to him. We sent him on a mission to liberate people. So Allah says, this man's mention is in Torah, and it is in Injil, the Apostle of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. His first task was, يَأْمُرُهُمْ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ وَيَنْهَاهُمْ عَنِ الْمُنْكَرِ That he enjoins people to good, forbids them from evil. The fact that there is a need for enjoining people to good or from forbidding them from evil is evident enough that man has a choice of whatever he decides to do. Otherwise, why would you sell the idea of goodness to man? Why would you sell the idea of abstention from evil to man? The fact that you are selling this idea or you are telling them what is good or what is bad gives you the evidence that man is a free individual that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created. And then Allah says, يَأْمُرُهُمْ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ وَيَنْهَاهُمْ عَنِ الْمُنْكَرِ وَيَحِلُّ لَهُمُ الطَّيِّبَاتِ وَيُحَرِّمُ عَلَيْهِمُ الْخَبَائِثِ And he made permissible for them those things that were good for them. And he made forbidden for them the, the, the things that were bad and not good for them. خَبَائِثِ وَيَضَّعُ عَنْهُمْ إِسْرَهُمْ وَالْأَغْلَالِ And we tasked the Holy Prophet of Islam to liberate them, to free them from those shackles that were holding them back. The shackle of idol worshipping, the shackles of being under brutal tyranny rule, the shackles of their own animalistic desires, the shackles that were holding them back and not allowing their own progress. We sent the Prophet to unshackle those things, to unburden them, to allow them to be able to experience this freedom that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to everyone. And then Allah says, فَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا بِهِ And those who believe in this Prophet. وَعَزَّرُوهُ وَنَصَرُوهُ And therefore those who believe in him and honor him and help him. وَاتَّبَعُوا النُّورَ الَّذِي أُنزِلَ مَعَهُ And they follow the light 
that has been sent by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with the Holy Prophet of Islam, Ula'ika humul muflihun, it is these people that are successful. Submission to the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a source of all freedom. The fact that the first kalima that comes to us says, La ilaha illallah. The negation in the beginning is extremely categoric as a part of the kalma to repel every idea that does shirk whatsoever with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So submission to the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grants this man the right to choose for himself a better life, a God, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who has given him this liberation. So la ilaha illallah as we say, it is a source of all freedom. All the idols have no value the moment you say la ilaha illallah. When we talk about Lat and Manat and Uzza and all these, I these idols whose names have been mentioned, these were not just huge stone idols that were created by man with their hands. Each, ide each idol was a bearer of an ideology, was representing an ideology, an ideology that existed and was prevalent at that particular time. It was from this that the Holy Prophet was trying to liberate them. When Amir al Mu'mineen Ali ibn Abi Talib sallallahu wa sallam ascended on the shoulders of the Holy Prophet of Islam to smash the idols and demolish and destroy them, Amir al Mu'mineen was not just destroying Lat and Manat and Uzza, he was destroying the ideologies that were represented or that reflected. The, the ideologies of the people of the pagan era at that particular time. So to remove them, to make them experience this freedom so that they are able to see what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has for them. And therefore, a poet says, thousand such does that we perform, thousand such does that keep us in the state of slavery we are, we are doing sajda to our desires. We are doing sajda to our idols. We are doing sajda to our needs. We are doing sajda to the oppression, oppressive, tyrannical ruler. We are doing sajda to so many, and the ideologies that we have. The poet says, do one sajda to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it will liberate you from all other sajdas. Just one. Wo ek sajda, jise tu Giran samajta hai, hazar sajdon se deta hai admi ko najat. That one prostration, true prostration, a liberated prostration, a free prostration, one bowing down without the worry and the fear of anyone but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will liberate you from billion other prostrations that you do. It will liberate you from all these desires that you have. And therefore, it is a right that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to each and every one of us to be free, to be able to make choices, to be able to stand before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to be able to answer the questions to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to be able to tell him what I understood by all this beautiful creation that you have created. It is this that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave to the Holy Prophet of Islam. It is this that attracted people towards the Holy Prophet. It is this that the Holy Prophet of Islam gave to them where they started feeling or experiencing independence for the first time. When they started feeling that they can have a relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala independent of any influences whatsoever. It was this that the Holy Prophet offered to them. Say, say, la ilaha illallah. Say, there is no God but one, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Tuflihu, it will liberate you from everything else and you will be successful. So freedom is a source from which the tree of life grows. You know, a little tree requires oxygen, it requires sunlight, it requires space, it requires water, it requires an atmosphere for its own growth.
the moment you stifle it, the moment you put a shade around it, the moment you, you try to protect it in your own mind that you are protecting it, you will probably not allow it to reach its full potential. The fact that it requires a space to, so, so that it can spread its arms, that will bear fruits and these branches will give fruits, it requires all that particular en environment for it to be able to experience its freedom and be able to express itself. Similarly, the freedom of man that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given as a right to man also requires an atmosphere it requires an environment in which it can allow its own growth and therefore the idea of servitude from the people who oppress deprive man of his own moral freedom so having said this we must realize that to be oppressed, to not allow ourselves to experience the freedom that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to us, keeps us in a horrible prison, which give us an identity that is not ours. It devours our self-image because we feel suffocated in circumstances where we are not thinking to be able to express ourselves to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. However, freedom has to be within the sense of submission, responsibility and commitment. It cannot just be freedom for anybody to just experience any kind of freedom. So a drug makes sense to me and therefore I will have a drug and I am free to think that I can have drug. Of course, this is not what we are talking about. What we are talking about is responsible freedom and freedom with commitment. Because if it is freedom without restraint, for example, and there is no restraint whatsoever in the freedom, then it is a breakdown of all moral and social order. And therefore, this freedom that we are talking about has not only been spoken by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Quran, by the Holy Prophet of Islam, but you will see throughout the time, there have been tools that have been kept by the A'imma alayhi salatu wasalam to give men the autonomy to be able to think and be able to flourish and to be able to find growth for themselves. For example, Amir al-Mu'mineen Ali ibn Abi Talib salawatullahi wa salamu alayhi. When he sits on the pulpit in Kufa, he encourages people to ask him questions. He says to them, ask me questions. Islam is there. Imam is there. Salat is there. Psalm is there. There is nothing in the presence of the Imam that is missing. But he wants to train them to become independent and to be able to make an inquiry and to be able to explore and to be able to express through this exploration themselves. So he says unto them, Saluni, qabla an tafqiduni, ask me before I disappear from amongst you. For I, you can ask me any questions. Do not worry about being worried that I should not be asking this question. For there is nothing that has no answer when it comes to Ali ibn Abi Talib. He says and makes a claim, ask me any question and I will answer any question. The fact that he says this, the fact that he puts a challenge on the people and his audience is to give them this freedom so that you are free individuals to ask whatever question you need to ask. Having said this, look at the life of Imam Hussein and see the, some of the statements that he has made throughout his life. The choices that he has taken. Medina was offering him everything. Materialism was being offered to the Holy Prophet of Islam. He was told he will be given the best of the most beautiful princess or the woman in Arabia. He was told he will get enough money to survive. He was told he will get what he desires and the leadership should he require. But his response, because he was not enslaved by the materialistic desires of his, he experienced 
what freedom means and he wanted to express his freedom the way he wanted to do, he rejected every idea of the offer that was given to him. Medina was offering Imam Hussein everything. When the bay'ah was demanded from three people, Abdullah ibn Zubair and Imam Hussein alayhi salam and Abdullah ibn Umar, Abdullah ibn Umar, uh, Abdullah ibn Zubair left before Imam Hussein alayhi salam. He left Medina and he came to Mecca. Imam Hussein left on 28th of Rajab after rejecting everything that was being offered to him and exercising his God-given right of that particular freedom. This comes to such a beautiful understanding of what Imam Hussein actually does on the day of Ashura. Imagine this scene, scenario. Or before I come to the day of Ashura, on his way, when he leaves Mecca on the 8th of Zilhaj, known as Yom Tarwiyah, the 8th of Zilhaj, people go to Mina and Arafat. Every haji must be present there by the 8th so that they can sit in the plains of Arafat on the 9th. Imam Hussein has waited there from the 3rd of Shaban to the 8th of Dhul Hijjah, anticipating that he will be able to perform Hajj. On the 8th of Zil Hajj, circumstances force him. He changes his Hajj into Umrah and he moves away out of fear that the, the people will violate the sanctity of the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And therefore, I must depart from here. But as he left throughout his path to Kufa, he met many people, not one. Many a people joined him. Many a people who had desires, who thought that this revolution of Imam Hussein salam, is going to give him the position of authority tomorrow. And therefore, many people came with the idea that once Hussein gets the position of authority, we shall be appointed as governors of Basra, as ministers, as this, or we will be able to get booty, or whatever it may be, influence. So that is why a lot of people joined him. One of the people that you hear of most of the time, but I want to mention about him in a moment, is Zuhair ibn al-Qayn. He meets Zuhair ibn al-Qayn on his way to Kufa. Right? He comes to a particular area, he halts and poses there. So there is about 19 to 20 halts that Imam made between uh, Mecca and his final arrival in Karbala. He meets Zuhair ibn al-Qayn. The history of Zuhair ibn al-Qayn is that Zuhair ibn al-Qayn was Uthmani. He was someone who subscribed to the ideology of Uthman ibn Affan. Zuhair ibn al-Qayn was called by Imam Hussein alayhi salam. So he was not subscribing to the ideas of Imam alayhi salam. He was called by Imam on his way. He refused to meet him. He did not want to see the Imam. His wife said to him, the son of Fatima is calling you. Why don't you go and meet him? Why don't you go and see him? He comes to Zuhair ibn al-Qayn and there is a conversation that takes between the two of them, takes place between the two of them. Zuhair ibn al-Qayn immediately experiences this state of transformation within him by a small discussion with Imam Hussein. You are free, you don't have to come with me. You don't have to join me. But this is the reason I am going for. Zuhair ibn al-Qayn leaves everything and joins Imam alayhi salam because a free individual is never stubborn when a truth is placed before him. Immediately they see the truth and become committed to the truth immediately. This is what Zuhair ibn al-Qayn actually did. He became committed to the truth one of the martyrs of Karbala. So Zuhair ibn al-Qayn was one of them. Another one was we, the status that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala granted him despite being from amongst those people who did not understand the philosophy of Imam Hussein alayhi salam was Hur ibn Yazid al-Riyahi. He meets him, you know the story, he meets him, they talk, they have a discussion. Uh, 
uh, Hur was not unaware or, of, of, or oblivious of the status of Imam Hussein. He knew who Imam Hussein was, but he was working for Yazid. And Ubaidullah ibn Ziyad and Umar ibn Sa'ad and all these people, he was working for them. So Hur comes there. You see, when truth is presented before us, for a person who is free, who is not enslaved to all the other things around him and is open to be able to find and express himself or herself, when truth is presented before them, they never ever express to their, their stubborn behavior. They immediately acknowledge it. Red is red. You tell them it is red, they will see it is red, they will submit to red. You tell them it's black, you show them it's black, they will not argue it's black. They will, unless someone who is enslaved by ideas of his own, by his materialistic desires, by whatever it may be, you will see that despite the fact that there is truth in front of them, they will always find some sort of a white in a black, or some sort of a red in a blue, or some sort of a blue in a green. They will always find it because they do not want to move from that particular area of their position. Hur was not oblivious of this. When he held the reins of the horse of Imam Hussein alayhi salam, Hur held his reins, and Imam Hussein said to him, Thakalatka ummuka ya Hur. May your mother mourn over you. This was something that was normally said in that uh, era in the people. It was something that was normally used. And when you said something like this, the response would be exactly the same towards you. Sakalatka ummuka. May your mother mourn over you as well. So when Imam Hussein said this, that's how we know that Hur was not oblivious of the status of the Ahlul Bayt Hur knew who they were. The moment Imam Hussein said this, who says, if it was any other Arab that had said this to me, I would have responded in the kind. But your mother is Fatima, I cannot do that. He was aware of all this, right? He said, your mother is Fatima, I cannot do what you have just told me. Yet, despite that, Hur does not allow Imam Hussein to go to Kufa. Nor does he allow him to return to Medina. Imam Hussein ends up in Karbala. But this is Hussein. Quran, the Holy Prophet, Amirul Mu'mineen, Imam Hussein, Imam Hassan, all these people came and gave us that wonderful message of freedom. And I will come to the ultimate statement of Imam Hussein al -Islam, in a moment. But see what happens. Whatever Imam Hussein said to him, whatever transpired in that particular meeting that forced her to bring Imam Hussein to Karbala. Imam Hussain arrives Karbala, Hur is witness over what happens in Karbala. Hur sees the denial of water. Hur sees the brutality that is taking place. Hur is aware of the oppression. Hur is aware of the conditions of the women. Yet, Hur sees it and does nothing. But on the night of Ashura, he reflects for the first time on the message that Imam Hussain gave him. He begins to reflect, am I a free man or am I enslaved by the ideologies and enslaved by my materialistic needs and desires? Or am I a free individual that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given this freedom to? What am I? So his statement is, I was pacing between heaven and hell. I was moving from one place to the other. I was pacing between heaven and hell. Finally, for someone who is open, someone who is free, they will never hold back when truth is in front of them. Immediately he comes. You know what happens to Hur at the end. But then Imam Hussein makes a statement when Hur's body is lying, uh, bleeding from his forehead. He says, Ma akhta'at ummuka ya Hur. Oh Hur, your mother did not make a mistake when she gave you the name of Hur. Anta hurrun fi dunya wal akhirah. You are a free man in this world and here in Africa. comes the day of Ashura. And I always wonder, there could have been millions of things that Imam Hussein would have said under those circumstances. But there was something Imam Hussein said that is a point of reflection for you and I. There comes a day of Ashura. 
Hur has given his life. Yeah. Habib ibn Madahir has given his life. His nephews, Aun and Muhammad, have laid their lives down. Hussein has witnessed this. His nephew, his brother's son, Qasim, has laid his life down. His Ali Akbar, he has, the father himself has gone and removed the dagger from the chest of Ali Akbar. It has taken place. The arms of Abbas are no more. Imam has already uttered, Allah in kasara dhahri wa qallat hilati. My back is broken after you, Abbas. All has happened. Final moments of Imam's life before he goes to the battleground. The Ashqiya and the enemies know the state of Imam Hussein alayhi salam. They see him, they see him roaring like a lion. But they know he is now a weak man. He has no Akbar or Qasim. But they do not dare come in front of Hussein. What happens? They create a partition between Imam Hussein alayhi salam and the khayma of Imam Hussein, where the ladies and the children were. And they tell Imam Hussein while he is in Furat, Imam Hussein is in Furat, they tell him, Oh Hussein, will you drink water from Furat while we have been commanded to plunder the tents of your family? Imam Hussein leaves the Furat, he comes. These are his final moments huh? of Imam Hussein. But I want you in these final moments to take this message home. Imam Hussein says, Ya Shi'ata ala Abi Sufyan. Oh, those who subscribe to the ideology of Abu Sufyan, in lam yakun lakum deen. If you do not have a religion, if you are just following it ritualistically, if you do not have a religion, وَكُنْتُمْ لَا تَخَافُونَ الْمَعَادِ And you do not fear the day of judgment. What does he tell them at that time? فَكُونُوا أَحْرَارًا فِي دُنْيَاكُمْ Be free in this world of yours. Don't be influenced by what Umar ibn Sa'ad has told you. Don't consider me a baghi. Don't think that what these people are saying is the truth. Think freely and see, I am the son of Father. See, I am the grandson of the Holy Prophet of Islam. But when you do not experience your freedom or do not exercise the right that Allah has given to you, then you are capable of killing even the grandson of the Holy Prophet of Islam. This is what has been given to you and I. This freedom and liberation. Finally, Imam Hussein alayhi salam on the night of Ashura, and I call this khutbah the khutbah of freedom. I call this khutbah the khutbah of freedom. On the night of Ashura, he now has the cream de la cream of his, com of his companions. And he has many others there. Imam Hussein tells them, after having given them his ideology, after showing them what he was, after telling them he was the grandson of the Holy Prophet of Islam. Everything has been mentioned to them, taught to them, given to them, and they have lived a life with Imam Hussein alayhi salam in Karbala and on his way to Karbala. What does he do? He gives a khutbah on the night of Ashura. And what is this khutbah? He extinguishes the candle and he says to them, Uthni ala Allah. I praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with the best of the praises. And I praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in all moments of my life. In Sarra and in Darra. Allahumma, he says, this is the lights are switched off. The companions are there. He says, Allahumma inni ahmaduka ala an akramtana bin nubuwa. O oh Allah, I am grateful and express praises to you that you have given nubuwa in our family. Wa allamtana 
Al-Quran and you have taught us Quran and I am grateful Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wafakahtana fiddeen and you have given us the depth of the ability to be able to understand this religion. Amma bahad. Now he says to his companions, fa inni la a'lamu ashaban awfa wala khayram min ashabi. Ah, wallah, I do not know of any companions who are better and more loyal than my companions. He is now referring to all these people who have expressed their loyalty to Imam Hussein alayhi salam. وَلَا أَهْلَ بَيْتٍ أَبَرُّ وَلَا أَوْصَلُ مِنْ أَهْلِ بَيْتٍ And I have not seen Ahlul Bayt who are more obedient than this Ahlul Bayt. Then he says, فَجَزَاكُمُ اللَّهُ عَنِّي خَيْرَ الْجَزَارِ May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give you the best of the rewards for this. Then he says, Allah. On the night of Ashura, he says, Allah. وَإِنِّي قَدْ أَذِنْتُ لَكُمْ فَانْطَلِقُوا جَمِيعًا فِي حِلٍ لَيْسَ عَلَيْكُمْ مِنِّي ذَمَامٍ He's brought them. He asked them to join him. He told them, come and join me for this mission. Join me and, 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 and let's, let's go and fight the enemies. Let us stand against every oppression. But at the last moment, Imam Hussain says to them, but do you know that you are free people? Do you know that you have a choice at this time? Do you know that you are people who are liberated by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And therefore tonight as I've extinguished this fire, I am telling you, leave if you want to leave. You have a choice. You are free to leave. You have a choice. Go. This night has provided for you the covering. Take the advantage of the night. Nobody will know. Just go. Ya Aba Abdullah al Hussein. What a message. The message given to us by Quran, by the Holy Prophet of Islam. So when we become slaves of our own desires, when we become slaves of ideologies, when we become slaves of oppression and tyranny, we become slaves until the day of Qiyamah. And each and every one of us is going to be asked the question that what was intellect provided for you? For what was intellect provided for? Why did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give you this freedom? So that you can be a slave or you can be a liberated person. Hur is told, Anta hurrun fi dunya wal akhirah. Your mother did not make a mistake. She did not err when she called you hur. You truly are a free man. And truly those who gave their lives away in the plains of Karbala were free men who said to Imam Hussein in response to his khutbah that even if there was a last drop of blood in our body, we shall yearn to give our lives for you. There was Burair, there was Abbas, there was Zuhair ibn al qayd there was Habib ibn Madahir. All these people were present there at that particular time. Let us remember these two children, Muhammad and Ibrahim, of Hazrat Muslim. Hazrat Muslim was sent to Kufa to make way for Imam Hussein's arrival and to inform Imam Hussein of what the people of Kufa were and the state of the city of Kufa. Habib ibn Madahir and uh, Zuhair ibn al qayd all these were companions of Imam Hussein alayhi salam, but Hazrat a Muslim, his cousin, was sent there and he had already informed Imam Hussein that the people of Kufa, he met Farazdaq on the way. Imam Hussein met Farazdaq on the way and he asked Farazdaq what is the condition of the people of Kufa and Farazdaq recited a poem in front of Imam Hussein. And he said to him, this, their swords are against you, O Imam. They are ready with their swords against you. When he reached the place where he met Zuhair ibn al qayn he was also informed that Muslim ibn Aqil was martyred. And the nature of the martyrdom of Muslim ibn Aqil was explained to Imam Hussein alayhi salam. He wept bitterly. In the death of Muslim ibn Aqil, he cried 
and the daughter of Muslim ibn Aqil also heard the story of the martyrdom of her father. But there were these two children with Muslim ibn Aqil that were imprisoned one year after the event of Karbala. One year after the event of Karbala. These little two children who wanted to get out of this prison. They did not know the crime for which they were being held back in the prison. They did not know what was happening to them. They spoke to the, to the caretaker of that particular prison and informed him that they are from Banu Hashim. They said they are the sons of Muslim ibn Aqil. He was a lover of Ahlul Bayt alayhi salam. He, alayhi wassalam, he released these children. They came running to a particular place where they found a woman drawing water from the well. They said to the woman, can you assist us for we are prisoners. We have just freed ourselves from the prison. Is it possible for you to grant us some refuge, a shelter for us? for tonight we shall leave tomorrow she asks them who they are they inform her that they are from the family of Ali ibn Abi Talib and that their father is Muslim ibn Aqil she starts weeping learning that this is what these children are and what has happened to them and then she gives them this shelter and tells them to hide in her house but informs them that my husband or another riwayat my son are people who are working for Ubaidullah ibn Ziyad, keep your voices low, keep away from them, from him, so that you are safe at night. Narrations tell us both the children have a dream. They see a dream, they are woken up by a dream. Muhammad says to Ibrahim, I have seen a dream. I have seen a dream. Our father tells us, you shall meet me soon. That dream has woken me up. Ibrahim responds by saying, I too have seen the same dream. Azadar and Imam Hussein, according to the narrations, Harith comes in and finds these boys clinged to each other, hugging and embracing each other. He asks them who you are. They say to him, they are the children of Muslim. Ali says to them, Umar ibn Abdullah ibn we have been asked by Ubaidullah ibn Ziyad to arrest you. I am going to arrest you and I'm going to take you. He holds them behind his house overnight in the morning. He takes them by the river and now he wants to behead them so that he can take the heads of these two children to Ubaidullah ibn Ziyad. Azadar and Imam Hussein alayhi salam. As he's about to do this, the children make a request. They say, oh Harith, what is it that you want? Is it the money that you want? Then take these little swords that we have and sell. He says, I do not want the money. He says, if you want, why don't you take us to Ubaidullah ibn Ziyad? Let him deal with us. You will get your reward. He says, no, I have been commanded to take your head and sever your head. Azadar and Imam Hussein, according to narrations, therefore, the children ask to pray two rakat namaz before he beheads them. The children are granted this, this respite so that they can pray two rakat namaz. He beheads and removes, severs the head of the older son and then throws it the body in the river and then he takes the other son and throws the other son's body in the river. Azadar and Imam Hussein, these are the children of Ali. These are the children of Muslim ibn Akhil. They were there but they got a chance to sleep at night and drink some water. Azadar and Imam Hussein, when you look at Karbala, you will see there was no water in Karbala. For three days, Asghar was thirsty and Asghar's life was given away for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala without a drop of water. <laughs> किस तरह फिरे दर दर अफसोस मेरे दिल 
پر کس طرح فرے در در افسوس میرے دل پر کوفے میں ہوئے گر گر حیران میرے پیارے روٹی تھی کری نادان میرے پیارے روٹی تھی کری مادر نادان میرے پیارے حارس کے ہوئے کیوں کر مہمان کس جرم پہ مارا ہے سر تن سے اتارا ہے کس جرم پہ مارا ہے سر تن سے اتارا ہے ماں سے تو کہو کیوں کر نادان میرے پیارے روٹی تھی کھری نادان میرے پیارے روٹی تھی کھری مادر نادان میرے پیارے حارس کے ہوئے کیوں کر مہمان کچھ بھی نہ سنی فریاد ظالم نے کیا بے دار بے جرم ہوئے بے سر بے جان میرے پیارے روٹی تھی کھری مادر مہمان میرے پیارے روٹی تھی کھری مادر نادان میرے پیارے حارس کے ہوئے کیوں کر مہمان ماں کو بھی پکارا تھا حارس نے جو مارا تھا ماں کو بھی پکارا تھا حارس نے جو مارا تھا ہے ہے یہ گئی مادر قربان میرے پیارے روٹی تھی کھری نادان میرے پیارے روٹی تھی کھری مادر نادان میرے پیارے آرس کے ہوئے کیوں کر حسین شہید کربلا وویلا لا عزو علا امام کم وویلا لا حسین غریب نینا وویلا لا حسین امام مظلوم وویلا لا عباس علم درم چشد وویلا لا اکبر نو جوان چشد وویلا لا اصغر شر خرم چشد وویلا ویلا وویلا وویلا ویلا یا حسین وویلا ویلا یا مظلوم وویلا ویلا یا اکشان وویلا ویلا یا حسین وویلا ویلا یا غریب وویلا ویلا رسوائی و ملال و مرح سے گناہ سے سب کو بچا لے تجھ کو بہت کر کواسا دنیا میں سب کو کر والا جانا نصیب ہو آنکھوں پہ ذری موں پہ لگانا نصیب ہو کر مستجاب سب کی ہماری دوئے دعا فریاد آہ زینب مستر کا واسطہ حل کیجئے مشکل میری عبد ستم ہے عباس علی تم کو سکینہ کی قسم ہے یا موسیع قاظم ہمیں آفت سے چھڑاؤ یا موسیع قاظم ہمیں آفت سے چھڑاؤ بہرِ حسن حسین مصیبت سے بچاؤ دنیا نہ رہے گی مگر اسلام رہے گا دنیا نہ رہے گی مگر اسلام رہے گا شبیر بہرحال تیرا نام رہے گا فاتحہ السلام عليك يا رسول الله السلام عليك يا سيدة خديجة السلام عليك يا أمير المؤمنين وابن سيد المصيب 
السلام عليك يا سيدة فاطمة الزهراء سيدة نساء العالمين السلام عليك يا حسن المجتبى السلام عليك يا أبا عبد الله الحسين وعلى علي بن الحسين وعلى أولاد الحسين وعلى أصحاب الحسين خصوصا سيدي ومولاي يا أبا الفضل العباس وأختك زينب وأم كلثوم وبنتك سكينة ومولاتي قمضة وأخيك مسلم بن عقيل ورحمة الله وبركاته السلام عليكما يا قرة عين رسول الله السلام عليكما يا فلضة كبد بن عم رسول الله السلام عليكما يا ناصر صدق رسول الله السلام عليكما أيها السابقان في الشهادة من ضي رحم رسول الله السلام عليكما أيها المظلومان القتيلان بأرض كربلاء السلام عليكما أيها المظلومان بأيدي الأشقياء السلام عليكما أيها المخلفان من مسلم ابن أقيل القتيل القتيل السلام عليكما أيها الضبيحان من نصر إسماعيل السلام عليكما أيها الحيان المرزوقان عند ربكما الجليل أشهد أنكما جاهدتما في نصرة دين الله وحماية عثرة رسول الله حق الجهاد فجزاكم الله عند وعن نبيه وأهل بيته وعن الإسلام وأهل أفضل جزاء أفضل أفضل جزاء الشهداء والسلام عليكما ورحمة الله وبركاته السلام عليك يا تسعة المعصومين من ذريته علي بن الحسين ومحمد بن علي وجعفر بن محمد وموسى بن جعفر وعلي بن موسى ومحمد بن علي وعلي بن محمد والحسن بن علي السلام عليك يا حجة الله يا ابن الحسن يا صاحب العصر والزمان السلام عليك يا خليفة الرحمن وشريك القرآن وكعبة الإيمان وإمام الإنس والجان عجل الله فرجه وسحل الله مخرج وظهور العام ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اللهم كل بليك حجة ابن الحسن صلواتك عليه وعلى دليلا وعينا حتى تسكنه أرضك طوعا وتمتعه فيها طويلا برحمتك يا 